on internet governance and cybersecurity, and I am the coordinator of the Dynamic Coalition on Internet Standards, Security and Safety, the IS3C. And with me are Savio Moraes from Brazil, Nicolas Fiumarelli from Uruguay, Mark Carvel, the on online moderator from the UK, and Joao Focao from Brazil as well. Nicolas is the project lead for the topic that we are about to encounter on, and Joao and Savio are researchers, and the third researcher, Oscar Giudice, is from Uruguay, and he is online, we hope, and we hope that the IGF website is working so people can connect online, and those who are welcome as well. Let me explain just a little bit about the Dynamic Coalition. We started two years ago at the virtual IGF with a very clear motto in mind to, to make the internet more secure and safer. And we would want to do that by striving to get internet standards and related security best practices deployed in a much faster way than they are deployed as now, right now. If we talk about internet standards and best practices, then we, just to give an example, in the domain name system, you have DNSSEC, you have Dane, DMARC, and that makes sure that the domain name system becomes more secure as soon as these standards are deployed. For example, with websites, if you devise, devise a website, then it would be very best to use the OWASP top 10, which makes your website secure and plug most holes in a website. And it's a bad, that's a best practice that if used, vulnerabilities become much harder to exploit by criminals and others. So at the virtual IGF, the IS3C was launched, and this coalition brings together stakeholders from all sides. So the technical community, civil society, govern, government policy makers, regulators, corporate and individual users. With a shared goal of making online activity and, and interaction more secure and safer by achieving more widespread and rapid deployment of existing internet standards and ICT best practices. Internet and ICT security is an issue that is extremely high on the agenda of nearly everybody on this planet. The spread of online harms and criminal misuse become ever more and ever bigger, it seems, and there see, also seems to be no end to them. However, it is, in this day with the pandemic, it's quite, we, we have seen how much we depend on ICT. If it wasn't clear to people, it was definitely clear from the moment we were all locked up in our homes and could continue to work, continue to be some sort of socially active, see shows that were all of a sudden put online by artists, etc. So it shows how dependent we have become on I ICTs, on the internet, but also on IoT, the Internet of Things, and that is a topic we will be discussing today. It is widely recognized that many internet-related product devices and services are increasingly vulnerable to security threats and the spread of online harms and criminal misuse. However, if relevant security-related standards and best practices are more effectively adopted and deployed worldwide, these risks can be reduced significantly. And this will foster greater trust in the internet and its related digital technologies and applications and the positive social and economic benefits of these transformative technologies for sustainable development will be fully realized for communities worldwide. Well, as I already said, the IS3C aims to ensure that standards and best practices play their full role in addressing these cybersecurity challenges through establishing the condition for the wider, more effective and more rapid adop adoption by key decision takers throughout the standards implementation chain in both the public and private sectors. And this can be achieved only if there is a shared commitment by stakeholders worldwide in a new comprehensive and strategic approach. The ISTC has established a work program that, one, brings together the security-related supply and demand factors together, and two, proposes the best options for deployment of key standards and best practices on both sides in the form of policy recommendations and practical guidance and toolkits. These outcomes will be presented as IGF policy recommendations for dissemination to policymakers and decision takers worldwide. And in this networking workshop, two more working groups will announce their start per 1 January. We shall come back later. Let me first say what we've done so far. In the first year, we more or less established ourselves and defined what should be the topics that we should be looking into. And we agreed to start with three working groups. 
and two actually were able to find the finances to start. The first one is what we're discussing today, IoT security by design. The second one is on education and skills, which will present its first report this Thursday at 16.15 at, uh, I can't uh, say the room for the top of my head, but at 16.15 on, on, on our dynamic coalition session itself. And this report clearly shows where the gaps, the skill gaps are in tertiary cybersecurity education, where the gap is between what is demanded by society and industry and what schools and universities are actually delivering. And that these gaps are in some case, cases huge and hard to close. But we have recommendations on next steps how to perhaps close that gap. The third working group is on procurement and supply chain management and that did not, was not able to find the finances, but we are happy to say that we can announce at this IGF that we have found the finances to start two new working groups, the procurement one and one on making, a, a, let's say, a top 40 list of the most urgent internet standards and related best practices so that people can start practicing with a list that is sort of universally accepted. So if we can come up with a list like that, it means that the world will be tremendously helped to start to start literally playing with a, a new set of standards to actually deploy them and how you can go about deploying them. The th in the meantime, another workshop where work group started that was on data governance and data security that started on the 1st of September and that will present its intermediate report on Thursday in our dynamic coalition session as well. So today we're here together for our working group one results and this is a draft report that we're presenting and we expect to have the report ready around February and this is sort of a public consultation because Nicolas here beside me will present our outcomes and will present what we have studied and from there ask you whether the the content we found is complete whether you know that there's more to be studied in the future but also whether you agree to certain outcomes and recommendations that we have so that we can actually better our report. There will be a public consultation through the IGF Secretariat and that will be opened somewhere in the coming weeks so that everybody in the world can actually access the document and comment on it and so that we can take these comments into consideration. So that's where my work as the introductory talk more or less stops. Um, officially, I'm the moderator, but I think that Nicholas will be moderating more than I am, as he's, the, as I said, the project lead. He devised this research, he found the researchers, and we are happy to say that we were sponsored by Microsoft that made the whole work possible. And that is something I would like to note once as well, because without them, we had never been able to do this extensive work. And uh, let me hand over to, to Nicholas and Mark, if there are any comments online or then you can let me know and I will make sure that people can ask questions or make comments. Nicholas. Thank you, Out. <clears throat> are you hearing well? Well, my name is Nicolas Fiumarelli. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here at this session. We are having troubles in the Zoom, but soon will be solved. Uh, well, as I said, my name, my name is Nicolas Fimarelli. I am from Uruguay in South America. I am the working group one chair uh, of this dynamic coalition that is on the Internet of Things Security by Design. Um, I am also the uh, head of the youth coalition on Internet Governance. That is another thing. And I am also a software engineer at LACNIC, where I uh, have been in touch with some of the RPKI protocols, the NSSEC, and some of the, the security standards from the internet. Well, now here we will discuss and talk a little about this report, about the Internet of Things security report. Um, I will share the slides. So, uh, <clears throat> from the IES3C Working Group 1, we are having this report that is about all the best practices or good practices found in, in policy documents, in regulatory documents. The difference from this report, uh, uh, from other kind of reports, is that we started from the policy documents. We started from the policy and regulatory and code of practices documents that are around there globally, around the world, and we didn't start it from the recommendations. We didn't start it from the, from the standardization. Uh, entities, right? We started from the opposite, from the policy documents to know what are the best practices already being considered by these policy documents. 
So this report uh, had a lot of these practices, and we will cover the different phases. Here is more like a background or introduction for you about the connected devices in the Internet of Things worldwide. We have seen a very um, a number of devices being connected to the Internet, and it's expected from 2030 to have uh, around 30,000 uh, million devices connected to the Internet. That is a lot more than the normal or common devices we have. Um, the Zoom is starting. Um, well, we, we have seen different kind of devices, right? The Internet of Things devices are of different nature. We have these small and constrained devices, right? Uh, with some capabilities that uh, uh, are not the same ones that, uh, as another uh, artifact like a computer or a mobile phone. It's not the same because the Internet of Things, as you know, are these devices that are tiny with battery constraints, with energy constraints, also with memory constraints. So it's not the same protocols that or the same standards that apply to these kind of devices. So it's another full different world uh, where we need to, to think in security. Uh, uh, in advance. So, to go a little deep, uh, we have found, and there is research, uh, previous research that demonstrates that it's widely recognized that these products, these related products and services in the Internet of Things world are increasingly vulnerable to security threats. We have seen a lot of denial of service attacks using this kind of devices. We are seeing uh, the personal data of, of people being compromised, right? And, well, this is a reality, and we are now here in 2022 with a lot of these devices, as I mentioned, that are already vulnerable uh, to, to these security threats. So the spread of these online harms and the growth in the criminal misuse is already here. So it's, it's very urgent that we, and it's some of the aims of, of the working group, to, that these standards are deployed, right? that these standards are implemented, and that the policy and regulatory documents include these practices, not as a recommendation, but more as a requirement, right? That, that is what we, we need to find. And with this research, we, we will go into demonstrate that there, is, there exists this gap between the theory and the practice of, of the Internet of Things. So going to the next slide. So, in general numbers, this research uh, has taken into account 30 different policy documents from around the world that are specific for IoT. There, there are not, uh, we also have seen that there are general cybersecurity policy documents or regulatory documents, but we try to follow on the specific IoT uh, focus documents. And these 30 documents came from more than 20 countries around the world, different countries. Uh, we have considered this region balanced thing, so having uh, documents from any of the regions um, in this research. And there are different types of, of these documents, right? These go from the national government policies, maybe regulatory frameworks, code of practices, maybe open consultations that have happened in, in some of the countries with different multiple stakeholder processes. Uh, and well, the, it's, it's, it's good to know that it's, uh, because of, of these different kind of ty uh, types of, of documents, uh, we have had several challenges here in trying to identify what are the best practices from these documents, because not, not all of them are, uh, as I say, the beginning requirements, right? Some of them are uh, uh, recommendations. So. But we were trying to, to focus on all these the type of documents and trying to, to bring all these uh, top best practices. And well, about the, the research leader, I am the research leader, and the researchers, as about mentioned, are Joao Moreno Falcao, Savio from Brazil, Oscar Chudice from Uruguay, and we have a, a volunteer research that is Victor De Pan from the Netherlands. I will explain very shortly about the phases of, of this research. This started in mid-April in this year, while identifying uh, uh, some, uh, having some preparatory meetings with the researchers about defining what, what will be our scope, what will be the information that we need to collect from these documents, what are the questions that the researchers need to re respond uh, from these documents. For example, what are the challenges that the research see? Uh, there are any gaps? 
there are stakeholders involved, right? For example, some of the documents mention uh, obligations for manufacturers uh, for in, 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 when they are designing and constructing this Internet of Things. There are other stakeholders, for example, for the companies themselves to, that are selling these products to have vulnerability disclosure. So we have a lot of uh, things that we need to consider. And in this preparatory meeting, we, we try, try to address what are the, the things that need to be identified or collected from, from these documents. Then we have a desktop research that were from April to early May about identifying a, a, a set of uh, policy documents and regulatory documents that are sufficient for for the research which with region balance and so on. So we, we held this desktop research and that I need to say that was very difficult to find, for example, documents from the Africa region or the Latin American region. There is a lack of documents in those regions compared to the other regions. Um, then we had a, a training and briefing of, of the research team that was an exercise, a practical exercise with one or two documents. When we, when we did what phase four will, will have, that was um, reviewing the document, analyzing the document, responding to the questions, and we did with ex this exercise with the researchers, so they were encouraged to, to learn about this methodology. And then phase four was the, the stronger one, that came, were from May to October this year, was about the, the profound analysis of these policy documents. Then uh, last phases were phase five, where they compiled all this document in a discursive uh, brief document, uh, categorizing these best practices, identifying kind of types of categories because uh, the different documents have different uh, terms, different acronyms, different uh, natures uh, for, the, for the best practices. But we, because we need to, to collect all them and do like a brief, we, we needed to create categories and to create things that the researchers themselves need to, uh, needed to create uh, or to compile in, in different sets or grouping. Um, that, that was phase five. And then we are here on the presentation of the draft in the Internet Governance Forum. And this will continue because we will have, we will open a global consultation, as Vaud mentioned, uh, maybe at the ICF review platform for you to make comments, to put additional documents that you want to be addressed in the future. We, we want to know also at this session, we will have some parts to, for you to make comments and, and questions about the research and about the, the conclusions. And then uh, this global consultation will also feed the Global Digital Compact because we are going to submit a, uh, wishing to, to submit a, a contribution to the Global Digital Compact at the end of February. Um, well, uh, as I told, uh, the publication or the final report and the printable version will be available in February. I'm hoping next year at the ICF we will have some printable uh, to, to bring to the people to know more about this research. Well, this is a world map where you can see the geographical spread of these policy documents. Uh, as I said, we try to consider documents from each of the regions. Uh, we have a lot of documents from the Asia Pacific and the Europe and also from North America, but we have lack uh, from documents from the African region and Latin American region. Um, there were also some documents that were from the European Union. So we consider that these documents are more uh, important because they are more regional. Um, <clears throat> uh, and yes, we, we found documents from Singapore, we found documents from Kenya, uh, Korea, uh, Australia, different countries around the world. Here is another graph on the quantity of documents per region, you can see there are, uh, there is very notable that North America has a lot of uh, documents and, and a lot of work done in, in respect to the Internet of Things uh, best practices, but also you can see that the Western Europe and other groups are also in that list, so uh, these other countries from the Western Europe part and uh, Australia part are also a considerable quantity as well as the Asia Pacific. But as you can see, only two documents from Africa and three from Grulak that um, we found. But something to mention is that we are seeing an increase in the in consideration of this kind of policies around IoT. For example, in 2022 this year, there were a lot of processes happening in, in terms of laws and regulations among Internet of Things that we are not considered here because it's a current work that is uh, happening. But certainly we, we will 
include those in, in future research or, or in an extension of this research. So here I will start explaining a little on the categorization of best practices. As I explained before, it was a, a very complicated process because we found that the, the different documents has different means for the different things, and the different documents have different categories, different, uh, for example, some of them talk about privacy, some of them talk about firmware updates, right? But some of them uh, called operation or continuity. So we, we were trying to, to identify what are the correct words and this was a, a very profound uh, work because uh, there were some concerns between the, the researchers about the, the technical terms. Um, for example, when you, when you are talking about the devices, maybe you are talking about the interface of the devices because there is a backend there that you can log in and, and connect with the device uh, from a, an external part. But some of the documents mention the device as the device extended to this interface, but other documents mention the device as the device itself, so an, as an isolated thing. So we needed to, to, to deal with these kind of differences, and also, as I told, about the best practices. So going to the next slide, these are the main four uh, categories we found. The first one is privacy and exposure, that takes into account all, all focus on encryption, right? All focus on this uh, cryptographic algorithms used in the, in the inter Internet of Things, also for, for authorization purposes. Uh, then also the word is exposure because we also included uh, these exposed uh, surfaces when, when it's not, maybe the device is protected but by the, by the interface or, or the, the, the manufacturer has a backdoor or something that could because they need to update the devices, they need to, to maintain and have continuity, but these, um, <clears throat> these attack surfaces are uh, sometimes are not covered, like they are not uh, sufficiently secured. So we, we put all in this category, the privacy and exposure. Also about the, having a secure management of the keys, or for example, how to deal with the personal data, right? When you are um, storing personal data in, in these devices, you will need to extra protect those because personal data, as you know, is very <laughs> a, a global issue. Um, well, it's, it's not the same to, to show, for example, a sensor that, that is measuring temperature um, in the air. It's not the same kind of, of, of privacy you, you will need to have when, when talking about personal data, right? So uh, the, all, all this uh, stuff, all these issues, are in this category, the privacy and exposure. If you want further details, then you can make comments or questions about this. Uh, about the updates, uh, you know, software and firmware update is a, is a very good, uh, a very important issue because um, you need to have the software updated. Uh, every day is, is a CVE there, a CVE is a vulnerability that happened because the devices and the interfaces use libraries, right? Where they, some of the devices use open libraries, some of them use private libraries, so these libraries need to be updated because, as I told, every day is a CVE there, and the, the, there are devices that are I, Internet of Things devices out there that has no possibility at all to be updated. So that is something very important. And For example, blocking unauthorized software installations also is very important. The, some of the best practices around there includes, for example, when you are booting your Internet of Things device, if the image of the software installed is not, uh, uh, is not like, uh, how to say, uh, <clears throat> integration uh, checks, right? You need to have these the integrity checks in order to assure that the software installed in this device was not manipulated. Uh, so this category we think is very important. Also about uh, the policies around 